One of the yeah. things that uh, John Lewin got me to make, and I'm not sure how original it was, but as far as I was concerned, it was a completely original idea by John Lewin. Let me explain how things worked in those days. If you had a, uh, an, an experiment, the output of which was a graph, and you plotted this graph on a piece of paper, and you wanted to know the volume of material this graph represented, the technique was to cut the piece of paper out and weigh it on some scales. And that, unbelievably, was what everybody was doing. And if you had overlapping graphs, it was quite tricky because you had to cut it out and cut a bit from the other graph and weigh that with the other circle. It was unbelievably pedestrian. And John Lewin said to himself, I can see a way that we can, we can automate this or make it much easier. And it was a thing that he called the planimeter, the optical planimeter. And how the planimeter worked was it was, an, it was like an XY plotter with a pen. So in the X direction you would have an optical graticule and as the light source and sensor passed the graticule, it would interrogate the Y axis, depending on where the pen was, and the Y axis was the voltage. So you were adding up lots of different voltages. So you would add up, say, 2 volts, 3 volts, 3.3, 4.4. You add all these up, and when you got to the end of the curve, the, the, the total number of all these voltages would, would be a representative of the area under the curve, and that would be a proportion proportional to the amount of material there. So if you had three or four different ones, you could then work out how much of each one there was in relation to another. And you could standardise that by putting a known amount in to start, but you understand how these things work and stuff. But this was quite a clever thing. And this idea, whether it was certainly, obviously, the idea of integration wasn't John Lewin's idea, I mean, that was well known, but the application of it to do this, whether anybody else was doing that, I don't know. They certainly weren't at Mill Hill. And so this was very popular because suddenly it saved a huge amount of work. It saved cutting out, weighing, having to replot different graphs, all sorts of things. And we were making these for lots of people. And as I'm sure you appreciate, that technology is now built into pretty well every piece of equipment so that it all comes out as a number. You don't get graphs out anymore that you have to weigh. That all. It's the same technique. Whether it's John's technique or whether somebody else in Japan thought it up or in America or the same, I have no idea. However, we, were making, we made one of these for a chap called Dr. Freeman, and I think Dr. Freeman was working at the Royal Free, the Royal Free Hospital, and John gone up to see him with the planimeter. And it was while he was there, he was walking through the premature baby unit. And whilst he was walking through the premature baby unit, he noticed a nurse going to an incubator and uh, putting her hand in and shaking a baby, and he, un he wondered what was going on. And what was going on was that premature babies have this um, susceptibility to what they call apnea and apnea attack, which means they stop breathing. And then, unfortunately, they can start breathing again all on their own. But it may not happen for a minute or two. And if that's the case, it may well be that during that minute or two, some irreparable brain damage has taken place, such that when the baby grows up, there's something wrong with them. And this, and John heard all this from the nurse, and he, he thought, well, this is awful, you know, this is a really awful thing, and I'd like to do something about it. And John was that sort of chap. He, would, he really wanted to help people. And he came back to Mill Hill, and he dwelt on this for a bit, and he wondered how he could detect that a baby had stopped breathing in a non-invasive way. And the story he told me, I'm sure it's true, is that he was in the garden watching his children play on a, a blow-up lilo, and he noticed as they rolled around on this lilo that the pressure on the different sections would mean that, they, that the air in that section would be compressed and then the air in the next section would be compressed while they were moving. If they weren't moving, that didn't happen. And he thought, well, what if I connected all these different compartments to some sort of manifold where the air passed and we could detect the movement of this air, we could then see if this movement was taking place and that would be a way of seeing if there was movement in the person. And if we could miniaturise this, and that's what we did. So he came back and we talked about this, and he said, well, we could get a polythene mattress made up with segments, and you could, you could make some sort of sensor, John, that sits in a manifold. And I said, well, we could use a thermistor for that, and we could have the air passing a thermistor. Yeah. What a thermistor is, is a resistor which varies its resistance with temperature. And 
as this is one of the things that um, you don't normally want with a resistor. You want them to be independent of temperature changes, but there are particular ones that are designed spe specifically to vary their, temp their resistance with temperature. That's what a thermistor is. And if you blow on one, you get a change in resistance. And if you've got a change in resistance, you can apply a current to that, you can measure the voltage across it, you can get a signal. The alignment of the thermistor in the manifold was quite critical, and that uh, uh, would, would get misaligned, and I would have to go and realign those. Also, the mattresses, as I've mentioned earlier, would leak, and so they had to be repaired. But after a few months, that got sold, and they were very reliable. Unfortunately, it was something that wasn't for the Institute. And so there was a certain amount of, of muttering about the fact, well, I've been waiting for my electrophoresis power supply for some time now, but I gather John Lewin is making something for premature babies. Is, is this what we should be doing type of chat? Now, I didn't get too much involved in the politics of that, and I think in the long run it was given the seal of approval, but it, it was a bit tricky um, making things that, that weren't being directly asked for and weren't directly concerned with the research at Mill Hill. Although, of course, it was benefiting society enormously. As far as the apnea alarm was concerned, that was taken up by two commercial companies, British Oxygen and um, George Pearson, chemical electronics company in Berkeley in, in County Durham, and they sold those directly to hospitals, and we our involvement finished. But John Lewin, it was his idea, he invented it, and I made it work. This would be, I think, in the 1960s and 70s, there was an annual exhibition at Alexander Palace called the Physics Exhibition, and a lot of, of organisations would, would uh, demonstrate things that they'd developed at the exhibition. And I used to go with John Lewin, and we went for a number of years. We would have a stall there, and we would put on this whatever the latest thing was that had been developed in, in, at Mill Hill. And one year it was... Um, we had the planimeter there, and um, a chap called um, George Pearson, who ran a company called Chemical Electronics in Berkeley in County Durham, came along, saw this, and he wanted to market it, and he also wanted to employ me. Um, and uh, the upshot of that was that I went for an interview with him, and he offered me a job up there, which I didn't take. But the physics exhibition was a very interesting thing to be involved in. I don't know whether it still happens now, it probably doesn't. And what happens now that used to happen, which is good, not a lot, does it? Um, but it was great then, and it, it was something which was um, supported by the NIMR. I think the powers that be thought it was a good thing that we were there, you know, showing people what we did. I mean, it's important when you're funded by the public, that the public one way or another find out good things that you do.